Oh, hey there, darlings. Good morning. It's coffee time, which is one of my favorite times of the day. Also, look, this pretty mug. Isn't this beautiful? This was sent in to me by a viewer. Um, so many people I end up connecting with on multiple social media platforms, and I forget how we get connected other than, you know, they viewed something that I created, I don't know, and then reached out, and we start following each other and all of that. And anyway, um, she's Michaela Makes Mugs on Instagram. I'll put a link to her. Uh, she's fairly new in the pottery world, but obviously doing just fine. This is so beautiful. Uh, and she made this one for me, which of course, the black irises are something that I really love. I kind of, I got in a big black flower kick a couple years ago and I haven't got off of it. And uh, I have some black irises that I love. And then I ended up finding, the stained glass that is featured in the middle of my greenhouse has a black iris in the middle. And of course it's really dark purple, but I'm back to black coffee because um, my skin's flaring up a little bit. The coffee itself I have found does not bother me. It's the stuff that I put in it. So black coffee it is. I had a thought that I kind of wanted to share this morning. I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to make a video of. I was just turning the camera on because I was about to go outside and pill around. I've collected pottery for years. Um, I took a pottery class in high school and loved it, was completely fascinated by it, and that kind of started the fascination for me. And then, of course, when I start doing YouTube, people would always comment about the fact that I had handmade mugs, and I would collect them from, I mean, thrift stores and antique stores and farmer's markets if there was a potter selling there. And of course, handmade pottery is fairly expensive, and um, for a long time I couldn't afford any of it. So it was, it was really just secondhand stuff and things like that. And I collected mugs, I mean, and, and pottery in general, but namely mugs because I've been a coffee and a tea drinker for a really long time. Of course, with YouTube, that starts taking off, and then people start sending me stuff, which was crazy cool. And I will tell you, I have been asked multiple times to show my pottery collection. I've never done it. I've never just been like, here it is, here's my whole pottery collection and gone through and shown my favorite pieces. Lately, I've been doing a lot of thinking and I just, I love being transparent with you guys because I know that it really helps me when people are transparent with me. And if we're not doing this, honestly, for the sake of helping people, what's even the point? I mean, that's just kind of how I feel. Now, I like to think like why am I doing things? What do I actually believe? I think asking ourselves those questions provides a lot of room for growth. And it's funny because this morning I grabbed this mug and I'm just waiting to go outside so I just kind of start filming a couple little clips. Not really premeditated at all. I thought well I'll just go ahead and show this mug on YouTube. And then I thought why haven't I shown my pottery collection? And I realized that the reason I haven't shown my pottery collection is because sometimes when I know that showing something or sharing something is going to bring criticism or conflict or negativity. It's never the majority. But when I know that it will, and anytime on this size platform, if you go, hey, look at all I have, you get trash. Now, again, it's not the majority. Majority of people are like, that's amazing. It helps small businesses. You go follow these person, every single person that clicks follow makes a massive difference to them. It helps more than it could possibly hurt, but there are places where it's like kind of tender and it's kind of like, don't you know how bad I wanted that? Don't you know that this is just such a, a sweet thing to me? It's a collection and also people can do what they want, you know, like, and I, th and I thought for a second, I'm like, Jess, why are you doing that? And so uh, I'm going to show you some of my, paper, my favorite pots because I do not want to shy away from something that I'm passionate and excited about because somebody is going to be negative ever. Like, so what? And it, may I challenge you all? If you hear someone say, this is what I love. I love this. I'm excited about this. Instead of questioning the validity of the thing that they're passionate about, be inspired by a person who's passionate. It'll make you better. Here is my pottery cabinet, which used to have chicken wire over this. This hutch was actually my great grandmother's hutch, which was in really rough shape when I got it. And I ended up painting it, which I know for like antiques is kind of sacrilege, but uh, 
I was 20, I was 20 probably, like I was really young. It was in really bad shape. And then after that, I decided to go ahead and paint it pink because you know, who doesn't want a pink hutch? My animals are all like, what are you doing? Aren't you supposed to go outside? All right, so all of these are mugs. This is not all of the mugs I have ever had. This is the mugs that like I currently still have. I've given a lot of mugs away. Of course, we've broken many of them just because we use them. That was something that early on I had like one or two really nice mugs and like nobody else in the house was allowed to touch them. But as I began to accrue quite a collection, um, obviously I needed to get rid of some of the other ones and so I can't get rid of all the other mugs and tell my family they can't use these. So we use them, uh, they get broken. And for the most part, I like mugs by potters who are know what they're doing and those are typically a little more sturdy. So I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite ones. So if you've been here for long, you know that one of my very dear friends was a extremely skilled potter and she passed away a little over a year ago. Uh, this was the last mug that she sent me. She mailed it the day before she died and I got it after I knew that she was gone. So I opened this one knowing that it would be the last mug that I ever opened from her. And uh, this one is really special. This is actually the one that my family still doesn't use. Like they know that I will be really heartbroken when this one gets broken eventually, you know, I mean, it just happens. A lot of times I take broken pieces of pottery and glue them back together and put little plants in them. Or I'll take the broken pieces of pottery and I'll go put them in my garden beds, which may be silly, but I just feel like the beauty of pottery is that someone like put their heart and their intention to creating it. And um, even though I can't drink out of it anymore once it's broken, I can put it out there in my garden. So this is my last Haley Rose mug, but I have several from her. And these are ones that you've, if you've watched garden tours and videos, I have had these mugs in my hand a million times. She made this one for me once, look at this, for Jessica and Jeremiah. How cute is that? It's really special. It's got like the tree swirl on the bottom. Now some mugs I have, I've bought at like side of the road stores and stuff, and I do not know the potters or I've bought them secondhand. Some of them have come from Etsy where viewers have purchased them for me and sent them to me so I don't really know the potters but I think this one was sent to me. It says Aaron Drew but I don't know. Um, but this one has got a little toad in a in a container and I toady like that was something that somebody sent me because my kids call every frog that comes on my farm toady which I thought was really sweet. All right, I had to get a little stool. I'm not old, but I'm not young enough for sitting on my knees on this floor for that long. This was actually one of my first Haley Rose mugs, which after very heavy use, this was Jeremiah's favorite mug, the handle broke off. Um, and now we just use it as a tumbler. So, I mean, like even sometimes when they break, we'll keep them and use them. So recently, Haley's mom, Rosalie, um, she picked up, she had done pottery prior to Haley passing away, but kind of in honor of Haley, uh, she picked it up and has continued to do pottery. And uh, I'll link, I'll link these people where you can find them. Hers is Rosalie Brushworks on Instagram. And she made me this mug recently. And it is really, really special. So it's got my farm, got my cows, um, there's chickens, of course the arch trellis, a little beehive on the handle, so isn't that really sweet? Um, I think this is probably the mug I have reached for the most recently. Now, a lot of years ago, Jeremiah had contacted Haley. This has been, I don't know, four, four years ago or so. If it was my birthday or Mother's Day or something like that, it was for a gift. And he ordered this mug, which she collaborated with her mom on. So she made the mug and her mom painted it. So I actually have two painted by Rosalie, but this has the Kajari melons, the arch trellis. Um, and this one, my favorite part, it's got the colorful eggs, but it also has bear. Bear, you're on a mug. <laughs> he doesn't care. Another of my most favorite potters that um, you've seen, and I have a lot of their stuff, These, all these bread bowls right here come from them, is a couple that lives um, about an hour away from where I lived in Arkansas, and their pottery business is called Old Dog Pottery. And they make like the sturdiest, best feeling in your hand mugs around. And they also make these bowls. I've got multiple little, um, 
like egg mixing bowls that have cute chickens and stuff. But their mugs are extremely well, well made. Um, I will also add, because for a lot of people that don't shop from small makers like this, a lot of times you can't just go to their website and buy something. There's nothing going to be listed. What you have to do is like get on their email list, follow them on Instagram, and then they'll put out a notification when they're going to stock like their Etsy store or wherever it is they sell their website. And so you have to kind of follow them to know when there's going to be pottery. Because obviously these are individuals that are making these things. They, they're not cranking out a thousand mugs at a time where they can constantly keep stock and constantly have somebody shipping. So what they'll typically do is they'll make pottery for like a month or two and then they list 30 or 40 pieces or whatever it is sometimes it's less than that and they sell them all they sell out fairly quickly but from all the people who follow them and then they spend the next week doing all their shipping and when that's done they start making more pottery so um, with old dog pottery like I said they just have like a really great feeling mugs so one of my most favorite mugs is old dog that it has trout on it, and I had bought one for my brother and for Toby because they'd gone fly fishing together. So I got them matching mugs, and I loved the feel of it so much that the next time I was in their shop, which I would go shop there in person when I was in Arkansas, now I have to order everything. I went in and I saw another trout mug and I got one for myself. So I actually have two here, and then my brother Drew has one, but it's probably dirty. It's probably over by the sink because I drink out of it a lot, and Toby drinks out of his a lot. So yeah, old dog mugs. I really, really like them. They also make these really cute little tumblers, which it took me a while to get into tumblers, but there was a period that I had quit drinking coffee for the sake of like just seeing if it was affecting my health. And I really missed drinking out of pottery. And I would drink like, I mean, all I was really drinking was water, but I would drink it out of like mugs and it would just make me sad that it wasn't coffee. So I started drinking out of tumblers more. Um, and now anytime that if I'm serving someone like wine or something like that, I like to put it in these. I don't even own wine glasses, but we have tumblers and it makes me feel like a hobbit to drink out of them. So this one's interesting. Um, there was a period where Haley was dealing with some health issues with her wrists and her hands and uh, she couldn't throw. She could not handle the throwing clay on the wheel. So she started hand building pottery, which um, it's a different style of creating pottery where you take a slab of clay and you build a mug rather than throwing it with wet clay. And this was one of the ones that she hand built. And so she had taken a slab and pressed this lace into it to make the pattern. So this is just a really cool mug, cool handle. Um, and I love the fact that it's kind of one of the few that she made like this. She didn't do a whole lot of those, so it's sort of special. Now some mugs, like I said, I'll just buy at stores. I don't know the potter. Um, I went and visited my friend Matthew a couple years ago during the fall, and I got this really beautiful sunflower mug. I really like it, but I'd, it's got a logo on the bottom, but I don't know who made this, but it's so beautiful. I assume that they live in Ohio because that's where I bought it was in a shop. I don't know if somebody knows this potter. Let me know because <laughs> I'd love to find out more about more of their work. Of course, I have to support my friends who um, are making content and making products for sale. I have never released handmade mugs uh, simply because I have no clue how I could possibly manage the volume um, and still provide the product quality that I would want to provide. I, th I think I would like to work with some potters and stock the Carolina Homestead Exchange with handmade mugs because we could probably keep the numbers down to what we're selling in person. But when we sell online, I mean, it's very possible that we could sell in the thousands of something and obviously no, no small potter is able to produce those kinds of numbers. So it's not something that I've done. But I have friends that have, like here's one, um, my friend Jesse recently released some mugs with Willowbrook Homestead. And uh, I will tell you that this has been repaired just because there was a little mistake that happened. I, I can't even blame this one on the children. I think it was me doing dishes that broke it off. Maybe it was already weakened by the kids. I don't know. But I, I broke the handle off and uh, I glued it back on and it's still working. So that's good. <laughs> This is a really great small mug whenever you're, especially if you're drinking black coffee, you're not putting anything in it. I don't really like the size of that. So recently I found a potter, my friend Cass, um, she has a channel called Say Mojo Homestead. She's local here and she gave me, 
I'm pretty sure it was this one that she gave me. And she and her family go up to the Gatlinburg, Tennessee area every year. And there's a potter there called Aylwine Pottery. Now, I believe that Robert Aylwine was the original potter on that brand, but now he has several potters that work for him. And so this is one that always has stock. And if you follow them, they restock a lot because it's not just one individual that's making it. Um, and Jeremiah actually stole the mug from me. <laughs> I say stole, obviously he can use it, but he took it over and that's whenever I looked up L1 Pottery and I ended up buying a few more that they ha all have the leaves pressed in them. But these are really great handmade mugs, super sturdy. For the most part, if, if, if I have several mugs that last for over a year in my house without breaking, I'm like, these things are magic mugs. <laughs> The breaking happens. Okay, I have to stand up. Um, there is actually some measure of organization to this. The mugs on the top shelf fit on the espresso machine, so the other ones don't. I usually don't use the espresso machine. I usually just make pour over because I just drink black coffee most of the time. My use is the espresso machine. So up on top, this is a couple more of my favorite Haley mugs. This was my first one that I ever had. I was uh, part of a group of girls on Instagram that shared different homestead life stuff. And we, uh, one of the girls, Hannah, um, actually had matching mugs first made. This was my introduction to Haley. This was before I did YouTube. Interestingly enough, Jill from Whispering Willow Farm, as you know, is one of my good friends. She was a part of that group. So somewhere in her collection, she has a mug that matches this. And this is another one of the early Haley mugs that I have that I still love very much. I love good textures. I'm a very textural person. And so for me, drinking coffee is kind of an experience. And anyway, I love textures. This one too, this one reminds me of the beach. They got like really textured bottom. It looks like sand. And then of course this, and I should say, I am a little particular. I like texture on the sides, but I really prefer the lip and the handle to be smooth because again, I'm very textural. So that's the experience I like to have. I'll drink out of anything, like, but I love the experience of handmade pottery. So this is not like made by a small potter. However, I was really excited when I got this. This is a Carolina Homestead Exchange mug. So this is one that um, we had made kind of, and it, this is, we have these for sale now on the Carolina Homestead Exchange um, website. All right, so the next one, this, look at this. Isn't it funny? Um, I was actually looking and I'm not seeing it. But I actually have one more cabinet that because my kids don't want to get in here, they don't want to try to have to grab a mug and risk like hitting another one. We keep some over in the cabinet and the, some of these are over there. Anyway, I went into a garden center in Arkansas. I bought a mug. It's green and it looks like this. It has the chicken face on it. And I did a video once I was drinking out of it and everybody's like, where did you get that mug? And I was like, I actually don't know who the potter is. I bought this at a garden center and it had the garden center's logo stamped on the back and the green chicken face. Well, I ended up getting a message later that day because apparently these potters, their, their uh, brand is called Ugg Chugs. They had been getting sent text messages from friends and stuff with screenshots being like, hey, this YouTuber is drinking out of one of your mugs. So I reached out to them and said, hey, I'd love to mention you, but just so you know that you're gonna get some traffic, are you prepared for that? They said, yeah, we're good, give us a, give us a minute, we'll open a pre-order. And uh, they ended up sending me a few mugs as a thank you. And they sent me a chicken and a cow and a goat and some faces and stuff, so it was super fun. But uh, I really especially love the chicken, it's my favorite one. So there's my Ugg Chug. And then, this is a really cool story um, recently. I, mean, I say recently, since I've lived here, that's kind of the demarcation in my life. Before I lived here and since I lived here, since I've lived here is recent, I received a mug in the mail from a viewer who had kind of, I guess what she explained, seen my pottery collection and had always wanted to do pottery and kind of like took it as a nudge and started doing pottery. She's on Instagram, it's Fern and Vine Pottery. And I have another mug from her that she sent me that says Wilder Still on it. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, but this one is the most recent one I got from her. Just like the last, I, I don't know, I think this came in like a week ago, but she had posted a picture making these and I texted her and I was like, I really would love to buy one of these. Actually, this is the first mug I've bought in a really long time. Um, I will tell you, 
Haley passing away. It didn't put a dampen on it for me, but it kind of made it a little sobering. Like prior to that, I really like just was constantly collecting pottery, but I, I constantly got pottery from her. She would send me different pots and I don't know, like when she died, obviously just grief is something you have to go through in any sort of loss. And when, when she died, it definitely was a grief that I had to go through and pottery was very connected to it. Seeing a pot online, feeling excited about it, being like, hey, I really wanna buy that. is the first time it's happened to me for a while. So um, I really love that. So Fern and Vine. Oh, this is a really good one too. This is one of my favorite mugs. Um, this is by Wild Pines Pottery. She's, I don't know that she does that much anymore. She's on Instagram. She never was like doing it as a full-time business. She did it on the side. So she would release like 10, 20 mugs at a time. Um, and this one is blueberries and we have a strawberry one or we did at one point. I don't know. It might've, that was Jeremiah's like designated tea mug for a year or so. It was very heavily used. Jeremiah picks one mug and uses it. I come through and drink out of different mugs all the time. I move old ones to the front to make sure that they're getting equally loved. <laughs> also, I, I'll get a couple that I will use a lot when I get them. Believe it or not, it actually has very little to do with the way that it looks. It usually has to do with the way that it feels in my hands or the way that it functions. So I bought this mug and again, I don't know the potter. It, I, I, there's a little bit of a scratched mark in the bottom of this, but I'm not sure. I bought this at Mushroom Mountain, which is a store specializing in, they sell mushroom spawn and spores and all that stuff up near Greenville. And me and Will went there when we were working on remediating the soil. And I saw this mug and I bought it and it quickly became one of my most favorites. And the reason why is um, the shape of it and how big it is. I just fill it halfway up and I can drive my car and not spill my coffee. So. I take my kids to school in the morning. I usually make my coffee while I'm making their lunches, but I don't really drink it. And so I grab it to drive them to school. And that is why this mug, I mean, it's cool looking, but it's all chipped now because of being left in the car. And uh, yeah, so the reason this mug got a ton of love was really the function, but it's also very cool looking. And again, smooth on the lip, texture on the body. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, I saw, I saw this. There's the trout mug I was talking about. This one's mine. Toby's is green on the top, but he's okay with sharing and so am I. Obviously, I could probably go through here and show you a jillion cool mugs. I mean, I could show you every single one of them, but that's the overview. Uh, Middle Earth, here's Middle Earth on a mug. That one I found on Etsy for Jeremiah for Father's Day one year, I think. Um, Cause you know, he's a big Lord of the Rings fan. And then, like this one is from Miller White brand on uh, Instagram, the radish. Pretty cool. Anyway, thank you guys for looking at my collection. I think that probably made a pretty long video in which I can wrap it up. I will put links to these people and you can go give them, even just following them um, on social media helps. Even if you're not in the, the market where you're looking to buy a bunch of pottery, just following and engaging uh, because of selling for small makers has really changed over the last few years that unfortunately there are a lot of people who are fantastic artists and artisans, but they're not great at social media. Now, I don't think anybody that I really highlighted here is, is necessarily not good at social media. A lot of people are very new on social media, but it is a demand to succeed really well. Like there are potters. I have mugs from a couple potters that I'm not even really gonna highlight just because they sell out in three seconds. I've stopped buying because I just can't handle that kind of demand. They've gotten so popular and good for them. I'm so happy for them. There are also a lot of great potters that are just, they just don't have a massive social media following. They're making great, great products. Just like the one I showed you that I'm drinking my coffee out of today, which is getting cold by the way. Oh, it, it's not that cold because it's black. So I don't have anything in it cooling it off. Like Michaela is just getting started. She's making great stuff and she doesn't have a massive following yet. So you can actually buy her things. Same thing with Fern and Vine. Uh, so yeah, if this is something that you like, maybe this will be helpful for you. And if not, maybe you can just be inspired by a person who has a passion and appreciates art. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you until next time.